I am standing inside the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center in Dearborn, Michigan. This is where today the first all-electric F-150 Lightnings will roll off the assembly line and be delivered to the first customers. The gas-powered F-150 is America's best-selling truck for the last 45 years in a row. We are here in Dearborn, Michigan, and today is the launch of the all-electric F-150 Lightning truck. It's a really cold and windy day in the middle of April, but everybody is having a lot of fun, and all the people are so excited to be here. In a little bit, we're getting a test ride back there. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> wow. Still doesn't get old. Yeah, it doesn't get old. So we're done with the test drive and honestly it was as amazing as when we did it the first time at the registration holder event in Denver. The interior looks beautiful, just like really comparable to the Mustang Mach-E. There is a big screen in the middle. It's really nice. We are now in front of the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center. It's such an honor to be here. The first car was mass produced in 1913 by Henry Ford using an assembly line. This is what I learned in school. I can still remember that. This is so cool. I think this is the assembly line right here. We're going in there now in the manufacturing line of the Ford F-150 Lightning. Isn't that exciting? I have never been in a manufacturing line before. Look at all these robots. You see this room with the bright light back there? Seems to be the final inspection before it leaves the factory. And this seems to be the final vehicle checkout of the assembly line. See the chargers back there? This is the most amazing thing I've seen in a while, I have to say. Look at these huge robots back there. Okay, so this is the most exciting part for me because we can see the platform. Let's see what we have here. It looks pretty narrow, right? So we have four-wheel drive, front e-motor inverter and a back e-motor inverter. Oh, the spare tire is right here. And this is, of course, all the space for the battery packs here. I'm assuming these are kind of two layers here and in the front, maybe one layer. Look at all the hoses for the cooling system. And this is not an engine. <laughs> so this is the front trunk. What I really like about it is that it's completely open here. So you don't have to bend over and put stuff in there or take it out. It's super easy. You want some ice cream here from the front. And the crazy thing is the Traeger is plugged in here. That's a 120 volts plug here. Just like a normal outlet that you would have at home. You can plug in everything here. Look at all these plugs. How many were there? I think six. 16 or something, you wanted to have as many plugs as possible, right? Also USB. No. <laughs> that looks completely the same like for the Mustang. So that's for the AC charging. The whole thing here is for the DC fast charging. And this is like the SOC that you can see from the outside when your car is charging. I like this. That looks beautiful. That's so cool. <laughs> So today here at the event, you can find a lot of engineers, UAW workers, dealers, as well as Lightning customers. And everybody, welcome to the Rouge. Bill, as you said, this is really history in the making, and it's your vision that's now come to life. They are planning to build 150,000 Ford F-150 Lightning trucks a year. When did you realize that electric vehicles are here to stay? We formed a group called Team Edison about four and a half years ago under a guy called uh, Ted Canis. And he recruited me in and we said, we need to work differently if we're going to work out what people want. So we formed this group, which was a startup within Ford. And we staffed it with open-minded people. And then we went out to see customers early on. And it was that work, speaking to customers early on, where we realized not just will it take off, we knew it would one day, but what will matter? And we determined that because people are resistant to change, you have to show them why. So every electric car we made had to do things they never knew or could do or never had before. And we started with our icons because we said, these have met people's needs of their families and business for years. And it's logical that if you get the product right, it's going to meet their needs in the future. And that's why we started with our icons. I'm a big believer in circular economy. I really believe that, you know, batteries, using them in the first life in an electric car, second life, energy storage, and at some point recycling them. And recycling turns into a local mining opportunity. So I would be really interested to understand a little bit better, did Ford already have plans for second life applications? So we have massive plans for it. So when we're building Ford Blue Oval City in Tennessee, we're combining with a company called Redwood Materials. And Redwood Materials are interested in how to recycle batteries, 
and get back to the materials to use again in batteries. And now you can see not just for the right thing to do, but because of the demand for electric vehicles and batteries and the materials, you're going to see supply can be a problem. So it's not just that, it's also price and supply to guarantee your supply. So we're already going to start with Redwood Materials recycling the parts of batteries that are used in the manufacturing process to get ready, get used to it, such that when batteries start coming back from electric vehicles, we will be recycling them and using them in our own batteries. One of the biggest um, partnerships to do that in the world, actually. I want to understand what's your take on charging from the road, wireless charging? So that's with, uh, in combination with Cisco, um, is that we're, we're putting in a one mile roadway that is an intelligent roadway. It does charging and it also does lots of other things and connects and takes data um, from vehicles that pass over it as well. It is unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe they can tell the make and model of vehicle just by it driving over with no other information except its size and weight. I couldn't believe it. From every car ever made, even back to 1950 and so on. It's just crazy. But that system also has in-road charging, which sounds crazy, but the system prepares before you get there and it uh, forms a connection. And by the time you hit that road, it's ready and it receives the power. It connects in and basically transmits power to the vehicle while you drive over that part of the road. Um, they start with a reasonable power, and but one day the power goes up and up and up so, such that you drive over a one mile section of road, maybe slow down a little bit and it will charge your car up as you drive on the way to work. Amazing. I wanted to know what is your dream car? If you had the chance to convert an icon to electric, what would it be? I would use the crate motor that we now sell from the Mustang Mach-E and convert a 1966 Mustang. Maybe I've said that before, but this is one of the most amazing events I've ever been to.